Sorry about the workout. <laughs> Going back to do 20.1. It's gonna be a lot of pain. I'm so nervous. <laughs> Getting ready for a warm up for 20.1 redo. Uh, scared shitless. A little pre workout nutrition. Quick digesting carbs. Do we do? Why not? The worst two barbells in the history of barbells. Um, about to start a redo. I'll put the video up. Different approach from the first time. Um, instead of thinking about trying to get through the movements as fast as possible, this time it's going to be can I consistently move at one pace through the entire workout? So I'm going to break the snatches up from the beginning, probably four and four. Um, keep transitions to a minimum and just try and get through the burpees not faster, but more consistently. The goal is not to get through rounds one through four faster. In fact, it'll probably be a little bit slower. The goal is to get through rounds five through eight faster and keep a pace up. So we'll see what happens. Just leaving the gym, just finished the second um, second go in 20.1. It was just as painful as to be expected. Uh, Jesse and I both redid, both did better. Broke snatches this time halfway, we both did four and four instead of trying to go unbroken and then breaking unintentionally later down the line. Um, tried to pace through the whole workout a little bit better. So I ended up doing 19 seconds better. Um, Jesse got five, six seconds better. Uh, well, it, was, first it was a lot of pain for not the greatest reward, but yeah, minimal second. reward, a lot of pain, but it's worth it. Um, push yourself and see how far you can push. I think you know, ideal scenario, which rarely happens. You're never full, fully feeling your best, and you know nothing's going wrong. So you know, ideal scenario, maybe I could have done another 10 seconds faster, another 15 seconds faster, but I'm pretty happy with where I'm at. Um, if you haven't seen some of these games athletes doing it, it's obscene. I think Jacob Hefner did sub sub eight, seven seven something. I think was his time. Um, Didn't uh, Travis his, Mayer do it sub eight? Also? Travis Williams did nine oh four. I think. Williams? Travis Williams. Uh, I don't know what Travis Mayer got. Chandler Smith got some ridiculous score. I think he was in the seven minute range too. These guys are like, it's absurd. Uh, I can't daughter. even think about how fast they're doing it. Yeah, and that's not even to name the females, and I think the females are gonna have faster scores than the guys in this workout. 
So for anyone doing it or redoing it, good luck. In terms of check-in this week, my body weight's up on average uh, 0.5 pounds from last week. So we're still trending up, still in the right direction. I'm gonna have my macros increase. I don't know exactly what it is because Jesse's gonna do my check-in in a little bit of time here. Uh, and let me know exactly what my macros are gonna increase to. They're probably not going up much. I'm guessing maybe five to 10 grams of carbs, maybe a couple grams of fat. I didn't have too much in terms of the weight spike this week, but definitely had some GI stuff just from eating out uh, for Jesse's birthday, ate a lot. Okay, so first, I wasn't lactose free this week. I did for about six of the seven days, but we ate at Royster. I ate dairy for Jesse's birthday dinner. There's a lot of dairy. There's a lot of cream on everything, uh, butter, etc. fried chicken, which is <laughs> buttermilk, buttermilk in it. Fried chicken. My stomach was not happy. Uh, the meal was delicious. If you're in Chicago, check out Royster. Probably one of the top three restaurants that we've eaten at. Girl and the Goat has stolen my heart. That's my favorite restaurant in Chicago. Royster is definitely up there. Um, and Galit, which we ate at pretty recently, also very good. We have an entire list of restaurants that we've been talking about in the ranking. So if you need restaurant recommendations in Chicago, happy to provide those or Ann Arbor. But yeah, dairy definitely hurt my stomach. Now I'm not gonna attribute that 100% to the lactose. I think that's what it was. But uh, the other thing is I don't eat a lot of fried food. So eating fried chicken or things that are very high in fat in one sitting could definitely upset my stomach as well. I spread my fat out throughout the day. I don't eat a lot of fat in general, dietary fat. Um, like I can, my, my macros right now are 57 grams of fat a day. And that meal probably had more than 57 grams of fat in one sitting. So that can, that can attribute to, or contribute to uh, some GI distress. Obviously anytime you drastically change from normal habits on your diet, there's gonna be some effect. Uh, also something that can affect people who think they might be like gluten-free, dairy-free. If you remove something from your diet and then you introduce it really, really fast back in your diet, it's gonna hurt your stomach. It doesn't necessarily mean that you're gluten intolerant or dairy intolerant, it just means your stomach hasn't dealt with that food in a while, which is why we always preach food diversity. Eat a wide variety of foods. Um, take things out if you think that they're causing inflammation or causing gastric issues um, or pain or anything like that, and then slowly reintroduce them and reintroduce them in forms that might not be effective. If you're gonna remove lactose, for example, butter is relatively low in lactose compared to other like full heavy creams. So reintroduce dairy back into your diet with starting with butter and then maybe move on to something like a baked good that's gonna have, first of all, lower amounts of dairy in it, but it's also gonna be baked. There's a lower lactose content in it and then start getting into your full fats, um, your cottage cheeses, your your hard cheeses, things like that, and see if that starts upsetting your stomach. Like I said, if you if you just go cold fish or cold turkey and cut everything out and then all of a sudden you go in and you have you know pizza with four different types of cheese on it and hard cheeses at that, it's going to hurt your stomach. Um, that doesn't necessarily mean that you are lactose intolerant or allergic to dairy or anything like that. Uh, I think that's pretty much it for this week. We are doing a very small kind of weird variation on Canadian Thanksgiving, which is Monday, October 14th. Um, we're not really doing a full turkey or anything like that, but some similar items. We'll post recipes. They're not gonna be in this check-in video. Um, just keep an eye on our Instagram page or social media accounts and we will have recipes posted on what we're making. Uh, some of these I think are gonna be macro friendly options. So something to keep an eye out for when we actually get up to Thanksgiving in November and you want more macro friendly options or just ideas on what to make if you're going to like a family party. Uh, Cause most Thanksgivings, at least for most people I know, they're going to family events. They might bring one dish um, and they, everything else is up to whatever their family is, is making. So if your family's gonna do a deep fried turkey, maybe consider bringing a more macro friendly option. All right, I think that's it. Checking out for now. Till next week. Peace. Oh, keep an eye on uh, our Instagram page again for the open this week. We're gonna have another uh, exciting piece of information coming out on Thursday.